Hello and welcome to the Titus Time Out podcast. I'm Jenny Abney Sivy, and I just got back from the ASHRAE show in Chicago. We had a great show there, and healthcare was one of the things we featured in the Titus booth. So I thought that I'd do a couple podcasts on air distribution for healthcare. Now this is like a really big topic, especially when you get into operating rooms. You've got laminar flow diffusers, air curtains, air change requirements, room pressurization, a lot more stuff. So we're just going to take it in little steps at a time. And we're going to start with laminar flow diffusers. Laminar flow is when a fluid flows in parallel layers with no disruption between the layers, kind of like this. Ideally, you want the flow from a laminar flow diffuser to move in a straight line from the ceiling to the floor. So let's draw on a diffuser in the ceiling here. And then let's put in an uh, operating table and we'll have our guy laying directly under the diffuser. Now you want the air to come straight down over our patient onto the floor and out the returns. Laminar flow diffusers have perforated faces with supply plenums and internal baffles that help deliver air evenly across the diffuser face. In reality, there can be slight differences between the velocities of individual perforations, and this will cause differences in static pressure, which will cause some induction. So it's not technically laminar flow. Think of each perforation as a column of air, and as the air moves downward, it'll induce some air from around the column into the column. What we often refer to as laminar flow diffusers are really unidirectional flow, non-aspirating diffusers. In super simple terms, it's a diffuser where the airflow is moving in one direction, and it's not drawing room air and particles into the airflow stream. You also don't want the airflow velocity to be so high that it's blowing particles into the surgery site on the patient. You basically want ultra clean, slow moving air over the patient. So let's talk about the air velocity. The air coming out of your unidirectional diffuser is most likely colder than room air. We'll call it 55 degrees up here. And this cold, slow moving air is going to want to fall to the floor. This means that it will gain speed as it falls down towards the floor. So it needs to be moving slow enough when it leaves the diffuser face so that it's still moving slowly when it reaches the patient. You want the velocity just below the unidirectional diffuser to be 25 to 35 feet per minute so that by the time it gets to the patient it's about 50 feet per minute. So many people probably don't realize this, but there's a thermal plume caused by the surgical site. So let's say our patient here is having some sort of stomach surgery and he has an incision right here. Basically the heat from the body is rising from where the doctors are operating on you. A 2002 NIH study found that the thermal plume rising from the surgical site was enough to keep the surgical site clean as long as the airflow velocity was low enough that it didn't overcome the thermal plume. They found that 25 to 35 feet per minute at the diffuser face was sufficient to make this happen. So let's recap. What we know is laminar diffusers are really unidirectional flow, non-aspirating diffusers. They have low velocity air that comes out in a single direction from the ceiling to the floor to wash the patient with low velocity air. We'll talk about the different diffusers in the air distribution system and then put all this together in a future podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and thanks for taking the time out with us.